Hello, welcome back. We have a wonderful guest. I've just been so excited for this one guest. It's Devin Patel. He's the president, CEO, and co-founder of Geostar, which is a global institute of stem cell therapies and research. Basically, what they're doing is they're bringing stem cell therapies to the masses for, for the world that's suffering from degenerative and genetic diseases, and they're trying to make it affordable. Dr. Patel, I mean, sorry. Uh, Devin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank now, you. stem cell research is a lot of people know a little bit about it. Yes. <laughs> so what is stem cell uh, science and regenerative medicine? What, what is that? I'll make it very simple so everybody can understand. Uh, stem cell is the master cell of the body, and from there the entire body is created. And their job is to repair or regenerate anything that degenerates in our body. So if you know your liver function is going down or your heart function is going down, stem cells are there and their job is to regenerate. That's why it's called regenerative medicine. Okay, so basically it's all about healing our own body using our own stem cells. Absolutely. Okay, there's a lot of skeptics. People don't know what they don't know and they're concerned about the risk causing tumors and many, many other things. Jeez, I, you know, when I was looking at this, there's people going, oh no, don't do that. You know, yes. Help us uh, you know, dispel the myths and misinformation. Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. That's a very important question uh, because there's a lot of misinformation in media about the stem cell science. But uh, you know, there are adult stem cell, there's embryonic stem cell, there's iPS cell, induced pluripotent stem cell. Adult stem cell that we use for the last 30, 40 years, and it's a regular clinical practice, well-established clinical practice in the United States and rest of the world, which we call bone marrow transplant for lymph lymphoma, leukemias, blood-related diseases, mm -hmm. you know, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, uh, many, many of those diseases. And we've been practicing it for so long, but we call it bone marrow transplant, not stem cell transplant, because that was an old term. In old days, you used to pull the old bone, you know, full bone marrow, and then stick the same bone marrow, not knowing it is the stem cell within that bone marrow that was treating oh, the conditions. But so it's a, and you know, uh, as science evolved and, and expanded, now we have a better way of treating uh, patients. And then now, the myth is about embryonic stem cell, that what you said, it would mm -hmm. form a tumor. So embryonic stem cell, if it's not done properly, not differentiated properly, then chances that it will form a tumor. But embryonic stem cell is not in a clinical practice. It is in a, stem, in a research uh, uh, stage. There are some clinical trials. And the first clinical trial approved by USFD in 2007, there was also uh, it, our chairman, Dr. Anand Srivastava, was involved at UCI and Christopher Reeve Foundation, the, mm -hmm. the Superman. You yes. Know? So that was the first clinical trial approved by USFDA to treat spinal cord injury in human using embryonic stem cell. So here's the answer to your myth. Okay. <laughs> now, um, what's the mission and focus of Geostar? Because I think it's a wonderful one because you're trying to reduce the cost, which is so very expensive. Uh, well, uh, our vision is very simple. This is the most advanced, most elite, and most expensive science of our age. You know, And our vision is to make it available to the masses. Now. In the United States, if you go to you know any of those top hospitals for bone marrow transplant, for lymphoma leukemias, you know stem cell transplant, it costs quarter million dollar for treatment, or it reached to half a million dollar. But it's covered by insurance and everything, so yes, it can be of, be afforded. But still, it's a lot of money. So our job as a R and D company, research oriented company, hardcore research people. We are going around the world working with the world governments and help them develop their stem cell research and stem cell transplant program where we bring down the cost to almost one-tenth of it. So like in India, we're working with the government of India and instead of quarter million dollars, we're trying to bring that cost. We have already brought down to almost $25,000, even lesser than that. So you brought it so to 10% of the actual tenth, cost? Tenth of a cost. We reduce it 90% of the cost because we are a research-oriented organization, so we have ability to do that. Not everybody can do that. And we have a government support. So just in India, we're uh, gearing up and building the world's largest stem cell treatment hospital to treat the most downtrodden people on the earth, the tribal people who don't even have a roof on their head. And these are the people who are going to get the most advanced science. Oh, wow. <laughs> at almost no cost. You know, I mean, talk about the mission and the power of dream or power of passion and power of commitment. Uh, and the political will and the, and the private will meet 
you can really make it happen. Now, what governments are you, are you working with? Multiple governments to yes. do this? Yes, we are working with the many, many different world governments. We're working in the, uh, working with the Thailand. We're working with the Chinese. We're working with the India, of course. That's where originally I'm from. We're working with the, some uh, Colombia. We're working with the Mexico. We're working with uh, a couple other countries that I don't even remember. <laughs> But, well, now, here's one of the things, you know what, these regenerative spinal injuries, what other ailments can be treated through regenerative medicine? Uh, there are almost 2,000 plus clinical trial underway around the world and in the United States. So people say, oh, can you do stem cell? Yeah, there are 2,000 clinical trials. That's a large number of data being created, and there are thousands of patients are part of these studies, and we have tremendous data being created in the last 16 years, and California is, a, is at the forefront of it because California government created a serum, California Institute for Regenerative Medicine, which gave us a $3 billion in 2004 through Prop 71, and now they're converting that funding into $10 billion. So, you know, science is uh, growing by leaps and bounds around the world, not just in the United States, but the United States still in the lead. So, you know, uh, like I was, I was just really curious, what other things can, you know, help cure? I mean, are we talking people that have cancer? There, yeah. there are many, many aspects of it. You know, a lot of autoimmune diseases can be treated, diabetes, you know, uh, um, lung disease, liver disease, uh, kidney diseases that can be treated. Oh, wow. Also spinal cord injury uh, can be treated. Uh, many neurological conditions can be treated. But this is all coming very fast. You, you know, now cat is out of the bag. You can't say, oh, oh, this is 20 year away or 10 years away. In five years, we're gonna see a lot of, lot of treatments available for these kind of diseases. That's wonderful. Now, how do you address you know, the, the affordability? I know you have governments working with you, but it's still expensive. Affordability, accessibility, effectiveness of the, uh, of the treatments. H how, do you, how do you address all that? Uh, I'll give you a very simple example. You know, the, uh, uh, the example of the you know, affordability, accessibility, and effectiveness. Just in India, we treated in one of our hospitals a spinal cord injury patient, a young man who works for the electrical company, so he would go up the pole and mm -hmm. repair things. He fell off. It's only, he was, I think, the 28-year-old. Oh, wow. And he had a, basically, spine was cut in two pieces, you know. So he was in bed. He was getting his uh, physical therapy and everything, but nothing was happening for almost a year and a half or two. And then we uh, brought him in our uh, spinal cord injury study. And uh, after first transplant, he started feeling uh, some bladder control. A little bit later on, the bowel control. Then he had a sensation in his leg. Then he can get on his knee and move around, eat his own food. He doesn't have to wear a diaper. I mean, we did, a, for, of course, couple transplant over six, seven months. And I come to U.S. and I tell our scientists, like, oh, this is great, this is awesome. And they're saying, oh, that's only 5% improvement. And I said, no, when you look at a lifestyle point of view, affordability point of view, accessibility point of view, and effectiveness, this is a 1,000% improvement. A person who makes $500 a month, we made it affordable to him. We, uh, we have... We made it accessible to the person of a, such a, a, a low level, lower level income person. Mm -hmm. And we made it effective enough that a man can eat with his own hands and live a dignified life. So talk about that. You know what, that's wonderful. The quality of life that somebody can have just by using these therapies can make a difference. And the ability for, you know, usually you're in the United States, sometimes if you don't have a lot of money, you're going to get basic yeah. medicine, yeah, and, and that's, that's it. it. And I think that's wonderful. Devin, thank you so much for coming onto the show and dispelling the myths and misinformation and showing us how medic medicine can be lower cost so everybody it can be affordable to everybody. Yeah, I thank you for inviting me, and I just wanted to add we are developing with the U.S. Navy a special program for our soldiers. Oh, that's even better. Hey, thank you. <laughs> You know what, for more information, you want to go to the Silver Hair Tsunami website to find out about Jevin, Geostar, and how the accessibility and affordability of regenerative medicine can make a difference possibly in your life. So stick with us, we'll be right back.